Hello fellow teachers, my colleague Joan and I are here today to discuss some of the highlights in Cluster 7, Partitioning and Telling Time to the Hour and Half Hour. This cluster incorporates North Carolina Standards 1MD3 and 1G3. Please remember there are no numeric fractions in this cluster at all. We will be teaching the beginning concepts of fractions by decomposing. One of the highlights of this cluster is partitioning. Partitioning can be referred to as separating into parts, dividing into shares. Please use the language interchangeably so students get to hear all of the different vocabulary. When you're partitioning, you can partition circles, rectangles, and squares only in this cluster. Key vocabulary is very important here as well. Here we're using a circle to demonstrate partitioning it into two halves. This is considered one half, and we're understanding that two halves equals one whole. This picture better represents that. One half and one half come back together to equal one whole. This is the same concept using fourths. Please note, we will not be using the term quarters. We will only be using fourths to represent one fourth of the piece. So here again, our circle is partitioned into fourths, and this represents one fourth, and over here we've labeled all of the fourths and we're using very specific language that four fourths equals one whole. A very important concept coming out of this cluster is the concept of decomposing into more equal shares creates smaller shares. Please note, only when comparing the same size shape. So here's an illustration of that. If we were comparing this circle partitioned into halves, and this circle partitioned into fourths, this fourth is larger than that half. So please make sure that you're, um, when comparing, you're using equal shapes. Here it's clearly seen that one fourth is a smaller piece or share than one half. We are gonna transition using the idea of partitioning to help students learn to tell time to the hour and half hour. Here we're using a clock and we're showing them that if it was partitioned into half, you're gonna have half passed. Um, this is a great activity to do with a paper plate. The rest of this standard talks about digital and analog clocks. It's very important that students know where the placement of the numbers go, what the numbers mean, and where and what the colon represents. You also need to use the colon when teaching the students how to write time. So three o'clock is represented with a three colon and two zeros. Here again is a traditional clock, an analog clock, and we're also showing the students how to write three o'clock. So there'd be three different ways that a student could write this. They could see it three o'clock, three o'clock, or if it was on a digital clock, they would see it as three o'clock. Again, the language here is very important. We hope you enjoy teaching cluster seven.